paint has had a couple days to kind of cure out and dry. Um, I'm planning on still doing a clear coat on the, the main casting piece. Uh, but before I do that, I want to put on the water slides. Um, these came to me from one of the uh, suppliers of parts. Um, these, this is the company that I, I've been really, really happy with, is MK Models. Um, I've ordered from the retailer in the US. Um, the last couple times I've used their site, it seemed like they were out of a lot of things. I contacted the owner directly and he said he's actually in the process of kind of shutting that down. Um, so as, they, as their inventory runs out of different things, um, they're not planning on restocking. Um, and the, uh, one of the other ones, uh, I think it's based in Australia. Um, for me here in the United States, uh, the shipping is killer on that. You know, I've got to order like a hundred bucks worth of stuff at a time, uh, just to make the shipping worth it. Um, cause it's, it is quite expensive to get something from Australia shipped to the U S. Um, and, uh, the same with the UK and just the initial prices uh, seem to be much higher on those sites than they have been at MK. So um, I'm not compensated in any way by these guys. They're not, they're not sending me free stuff or anything. Um, this is just my recommendation. I've had really good experience with MK. I'm really happy with all of the pieces that I've ordered from them. Their, uh, their transfers and water slides especially these have been uh, really, really high quality. I've done uh, four or five from them now, and um, they've all been great. So, like most other models, as soon as these start to get loose here a little bit, you want to apply a little bit of water onto the model itself. And make sure your angle matches up with the correct side of the bus. So this piece here belongs on this side because the angles will match down at this end. After the decals have had a chance to dry, I finish them off with a little bit of this Tester's decal set number 8804. Um, I use just a little brush with that. It doesn't take really very much of this at all. Um, and in my experience, this is really only necessary if you're planning on doing something over, over the top of the decal. And in this case, I want to do a clear coat over everything when we're all done. So that is why I'm doing the decal set on this. And it's important you want to kind of work it, especially at your edges, um, just to make sure that that decal is really sealed down tight to the paint that's underneath. Um, And that's, that's about it. So we're gonna let that dry and come back and we will clear coat. And as soon as this is clear coated, we'll be ready for reassembly. So our next step in this restoration is to put our wheels back on our base. Um, the screws that I hot glued are pretty easy. You just snap them right off, especially if, you've, uh, if you let them get cold. Um, that glue becomes pretty weak and will come right off. So um, our axles are polished, wheels are ready to go. So I'm gonna feed an axle through a wheel, through our base, and fit another wheel on top. 
Something I typically do too is I'll, I'll take a really close look at the wheel just to see, you know, is there one side that's better than the other? Um, there's not really an inside or an outside on these. Um, the, the casting is symmetric. Uh, but I'll, if there's, you know, any sort of little anomalies or um, imperfections, I'll try to put those on the inside of the wheel. Um, and then to reassemble, I'm going to use a method that I'm sure you've seen on other restoration channels. And that is uh, this sort of mandrel, this homemade mandrel um, on my drill press. And there we go. With the base complete, the only thing that's left is to reassemble. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start with our glass. Um, in this case, because this model actually has an inner piece with posts that are gonna hold that glass in place, I'm not even concerned with um, using any silicone or anything to hold that up there. I left a pretty generous uh, stub on the, the inside when I drilled those out just to help hold it in place. So um, all I'm gonna do is drop the glass in there and I'm gonna rely on the inner plastics to hold that glass up in place. It's got my inner plastics in. I've got my fixed um, wheel suspension piece. So I'm gonna push that right in the middle. And then fit our base. I'm gonna start on this end with the little tabs as I go back in. Now on this particular model, those little pins in the back, those are so small, um, there's not really a way to drill and tap those. So all I'm going to do is add just a little dab of super glue in there. Um, but that will complete our restoration of the Matchbox number 66 Greyhound bus. The box that we have for this model is actually in pretty good shape. Um, it's got a little crease line along the top here, crease line along the face. Um, but all in all, you know, it's it's complete. It's got all of our flaps. Um, everything is attached. This end flap here um, is literally hanging on by just a little piece. So um, that's going to be one of our main repairs uh, today is fixing that, that tear along there to make sure that that stays. Most of these other things, I think I'm probably gonna leave as is. Um, this one, you know, it's not even worn on the inside there. Got a little issue in this corner, a little issue in this corner, but those haven't spread and they're not at the point yet where I think they warrant a repair. So uh, minimal work on this today, really just this, this one end flap that's loose. Um, so to start, I'm going to start like I always do, and that is using a standard household iron. Um, I'm going to put this on about a medium heat setting. I don't need the steam, I just need the heat. And so I've unfolded my box, got all my flaps out, and we're just going to press this flat to start.
So I had a couple comments uh, from some viewers of uh, some new products to check out for repairs like this. Um, and so I, I have ordered a few things. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what I'm gonna do different on this box than what I've been doing differently on some of my previous. Um, so the, the Elmer's white glue that I've been using, um, it's not bad, but this is an acid-free with a neutral pH adhesive um, that does the exact same thing. So this is an archival quality glue. Um, this is from a company called Lineco. They kind of specialize in document restoration um, and uh, you know archival quality photos, drawings, all that sort of stuff. So I got some, some pH neutral adhesive uh, instead of the Elmer's white glue. Uh, another thing I found is from the same company um, this is called mending tissue. Um, so it's it's used for repairing tears, uh, specifically tears in paper. Um, it's supposed to be very easy to use. Comes on a roll, just peel off, um, you know, tape whatever you need, um, and then you burnish it. Once you're done, you burnish it to get it all to uh, stick, and it will repair uh, all sorts of you know tears, runs, damage to. Um, any kind of paper. So this is what it looks like. Comes on a roll in there. Um, and then the last thing I got to help me with some of my bends and folds uh, that I think, you know, I, I showed in a, kind of a smattering of different tools previously of how I was doing the bends, but I actually bought a bone burnishing tool with a straight edge. So this will give me something that I can lay on those repaired boxes to bend or pry against um, to get my nice straight lines. This will also allow me to burnish down the uh, mending tissue. So I've never used this before. This is my first shot at it. I'm gonna try it in this video. Um, so we'll see how it goes. The first thing I'm gonna do is take off a section of this uh, mending tissue. Uh, the way this box is made, it's got kind of a feed out the bottom. So I'm going to cut a little piece that I think is about big enough to make our repair. Now, you'll see on those, on the edge of that, that that tape starts to peel up. And that really gives you an idea of what this mending tissue is. It's just a very, very light almost translucent um, tape. So it's got an adhesive on the one side, that's why it's kind of like peel and stick. Um, and the backing piece, of course, will be removed once we get it set. So I'm gonna start by just trying to get on the one edge of this flap and where it's torn and try to get it back in as close as I can to that edge and then see if I can peel off the rest of, oh, no, there we go. This has a little more workability than my uh, paper tape seems like I can, uh, reposition it a little bit better. <laughs> when it came unrolled there, I thought, oh no, that piece is shot. But um, this has a fairly good stick to it, but not, not so much that it can't be undone. Um, I've got a little extra in here. Come in with my little fine scissors and cut off our extra pieces there. We've got our, our repair tape on there, and the next step, according to the directions on this stuff, is to burnish it down. So, I'm going to use my burnishing tool here. Let's see if I can get that all to stick. The nice thing about this stuff is it's not completely 
transparent, but pretty close to completely transparent. So even after that repair is made, you don't really see it, you know? That just looks like the original box. So um, it says for maximum effectiveness, you can do both sides of the tear. Um, and since this one was so close to literally just falling off, um, I think I am gonna go ahead and use a second piece on the outside of the box. So make sure, yeah, that's about right. Got the start. I'm gonna take this end where I've kind of touched it with my fingers and overhang that. So hopefully I can clip that off. Line the rest of this up right on that lined up. And then we'll burnish it down. So this is really you can kind of see the outline here before I burnish it. And then as I work that adhesive down with the burnishing tool, it just starts to kind of go transparent and just disappear. So pretty cool stuff. Um, it's also very thin. Um, it seems to be pretty strong, but it's still very thin. And I'm excited about that because the uh, one of the disadvantages to using the craft paper, the paper tape, um, is it is pretty thick and it does add um, some significant heft onto those folds and when I fold it, it wrinkles. And as you can see with this mending tape, it's really like there's almost nothing there. Um, so the last step I'm gonna take before I put this box back together um, is just to, again, a quick press. Uh, I can see a couple areas like this little mangled bit here that I maybe missed on my first round. So this is kind of my, my last two round get some of those pressed down, get all my flaps straight. And I'm curious as to if I can press over what the heat will do to that mending tape. So far so good, I would say. completes our box restoration. Um, all we got to do now is put it all together. That's going to do it for our restoration of our matchbox number 66, Greyhound Coach. Um, I do want to give a big thank you to the viewers who recommended that I look into this as a alternate method for repairing some of those tears. Um, I love it when I get comments and I do read them all. So thank you very much for the feedback on this. I think on this box that was absolutely a great repair method. Uh, definitely one that I will use in the future on the boxes. Um, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, click that little subscribe button right down here. Let's you keep up with us. Uh, see all of our new videos when they come out. Um, and don't forget, uh, down in our description, is a link to our Facebook page. Uh, it's another way to keep up with us. Uh, will be an, another platform for us to share some of our content uh, and do some things that we can't do here on YouTube. So. Appreciate you all uh, sticking with me. This is a longer video. Um, I think in the future I'll probably separate these into a part one, part two, one for the box, and then a second video or part two for the coach. 
or the car or whatever it is that I'm, I'm doing. So thanks for watching and be sure to check us out next week when our next restoration video drops.